Hello everyone and welcome back to another Space News Rundown with me. We once again have many things to cover with SpaceX Starship development, space launch news and events from the past week and of course prepare you all for what to expect over the next seven days. So let's begin. We start off with some slightly bittersweet news. The launch area landscape has always been dominated by four key structures. We've got the launch tower, Booster 4, Ship 20 and the remains of Booster 3. Well, today I can say that Booster 3 was finally removed from the site after being taken apart with a plasma torch. Nick Ansoini from NASA Spaceflight caught some images of the moment of the first and so far only Super Heavy to perform a static fire of its Raptor engines being taken away. I remember how we all initially thought that we might see this thing perform an SN5 and SN6 style hop, like how Corey here beautifully envisioned in this animation. But I guess this is the closest we'll get to a BN3 hop now. Rest in pieces, you beautiful machine. <laughs> Nick also caught this image of some, in his words, grabby plates on the quick disconnect arm, which will help keep the Starship in place on the launch pad. This is only the quick disconnect arm, by the way, not to be confused with the massive chopstick catch system, which as you can see is now completely freed of its scaffolding. This is because last week SpaceX finally began motility testing of the system. We saw them completely open up the arms, which of course will be the position that the arms take up just before catching a booster, whereupon it'll slam them closed together again to take the weight of the Super Heavy as this great animation by Corey shows. SpaceX also did a very brief test of the cable system that moves the arms up and down the tower. It didn't move by very much since this is only a preliminary test, so provided there were no anomalies during this, I would expect to see the team begin moving moving the arms further and further up and down the tower until we see the whole thing scaled. When it comes to the actual vehicles themselves, Ship 20, Booster 4 and of course all the other in development builds, not a lot of stuff has happened since last week. Brendan Lewis's latest overview diagram does a great job showing where we are with each of these. Ship 20 has completed its six engine static fire and is awaiting orbital flight test approval from the FAA. Ship 21 is awaiting final stacking in the high bay. Ship 22's barrel and dome sections are being worked on and Ship 23 and 24 are in the early stages of construction as well. There's still no update from the FAA, by the way. Their review is now predicted to be completed by the end of February, so until then, SpaceX can't launch Booster 4 and Ship 20, or any other combination of boosters and starships for that matter, until approval is completed and SpaceX have applied for and successfully obtained a launch license. I'll let you know if anything changes here, but it's unfortunately not very likely. At least we have the excellent community renders from talented animators like Robos Bomb and Corey to keep us hyped up for now. And that's all I have to say really about Starship this week. Basically, it's all business as usual. The same ships and the same new high bay are all being built, and I will continue to keep you all in the loop every single Monday on Space This Week. Don't forget to subscribe so that you never miss an episode. And hey, if you want to drop a like down there as well, it really helps me out and I always do appreciate it. Anyway, whilst there's no additional Starship news I wanted to discuss today, there's still a couple of major SpaceX developments from the past week to discuss. For that though, I'll roll the transition to the video's next segment. Last week saw just the one launch, the first launch of the year. This was a SpaceX Falcon 9 carrying the latest batch of Starlink satellites to space. The 49 satellites were deployed to Starlink shell number 4. This is the fourth launch to this shell. We could expect to see at least 26 more flights to this particular Starlink shell, as SpaceX predicted it'll take a total of 30 launches to fill. As for the Falcon 9 first stage itself, this successfully landed on the drone ship a short fall of Gravitas, marking the fourth successful flight of this booster and also marking the 101st booster landing for SpaceX. Now, last episode I covered the SpaceX CRS-24 launch, in which SpaceX flew a cargo dragon to the International Space Station atop Falcon 9 booster 1069. At the time, I reported that the booster safely touched down on the drone ship landing platform. Now, while it did survive the landing, it's now apparent that the rocket did in fact sustain a fair amount of damage to its engines and landing legs post landing. Sean of Planet Deimos snapped some great pictures detailing the extensive damage to the Merlin engine bells and the buckled landing legs that are holding the booster at a 5 degree tilt. Hopefully SpaceX can repair the damages and get 1069 flight worthy once again. I've been saving the biggest news from last week until now and that is we can all finally breathe a huge sigh of relief. 
The James Webb Space Telescope is now fully deployed. It was one thing watching the Ariane 5 launch back on Christmas Day, but at the end of the day, the Ariane 5 is a supremely dependable launch vehicle and it was very unlikely to explode on liftoff. The biggest hurdle the telescope would need to cross would be the monstrously complicated unfolding process, an animation of which you can see on screen that hopefully illustrates just how much stuff needs to happen and how much room for failure there was. Luckily, it's over now. The $10 billion space telescope finished unfolding the massive primary mirror, marking the end of the deployment process. I am certainly looking forward to seeing what amazing images the James Webb Space Telescope will undoubtedly beam back to us over the course of its life. Also in the news last week, we saw China make preparations for the expansion of its space station. Currently, it only consists of the Tianhe core module, and on the 5th of January, the onboard Taikonauts conducted a transposition test of the module's robot arm. In the test, the Tianzhou 2 cargo spacecraft undocked from the station, and then controllers used the arm to move it to another docking port. It was then returned and redocked to its original docking location. The test appeared to go well, so all looks good for the arrival of both the Wentian Experiment Capsule 1 and the Mengtian Experiment Capsule 2. Now that's the stuff I wanted to cover from last week, but we do have a couple of interesting launches coming up this week, so let's discuss those now. The first launch of the week will be on the 12th of January, and this will be Virgin Orbit's Launcher 1. This flight will mark the fourth launch for the Launcher 1 rocket, which will of course once again be deployed from the wing of Virgin Orbit's modified Boeing 747, nicknamed Cosmic Girl. The rocket will carry a few payloads, including two nanosatellites for Polish firm Sat Revolution and satellites for the United States Department of Defense. This launch has seen a couple of delays since it was first announced, but hopefully this week sees things finally go ahead as planned. The next launch will be the following day on the 13th of January and will be SpaceX's Transporter 3 mission, their latest Falcon 9 dedicated rideshare flight. Falcon 9, of course, can carry quite a massive number of small satellites and these transporter missions always carry a large number of payloads from customers all around the world. Notable payloads, though, include the NanoRacks Outpost Technology Demonstration Mission, named Mars Demo-1, which will cut metal samples made to represent the upper stage of a rocket in order to test technologies for converting spent upper stages into NanoRacks Space Outposts, or in other words, converting spent stages into commercial habitats, which is a long-term goal of NanoRacks. Also on board the Falcon 9 will be the Elana 40 mission. Elana, standing for Educational Launch of Nanosatellites, is an initiative created by NASA, and this payload will consist of two CubeSats. These two flights are the only expected launches of the week so far. <laughs> Usually China doesn't really give us enough notice for me to always cover their launches in this preview segment, so I wouldn't be surprised at all if in next week's video I end up talking about a Long March launch or something, and if you want to make sure you don't miss that hypothetical video, then don't forget to subscribe via that red button below and of course if you've enjoyed the video then a like is always very much appreciated. Now is that time where I give a big shout out to all my generous patrons who help support the channel and if you want to join their ranks you can follow the description and or on screen links or alternatively you can become a channel member for just £2.99 a month and get early access to videos and this week in particular you'll get early access to my next Kerbal Space Program video as well. I'm just about out of time now so big thank you to all once again for watching and I'll see you all next time.